Hey guys, so I uh, just came back from my, uh, I guess you could call it a vacation in Chicago. And I go to plug in my uh, mini fridge, right? And uh, this little green LED just just flashing and this uh, fan is pulsing with the LED. So that leads me to believe that there's some sort of power supply failure in here. Um, which is a huge shame because I, I really like this fridge and it really worked well. But, I'm going to let the caps discharge for a few days and hopefully find a new power supply. So yeah, I guess I'll cut to then. Okay, so it's been around a day. Um, well, it's, I actually waited around 12 hours, even though it's been around 24 hours since I last recorded the thing. And uh, this is our little cheap power supply, and as you can see... Um, well... Um, as you can see here... Yeah, you see that? You see how there's a little dome on top? So this capacitor is actually bad, which is surprising because you don't, you don't really see that in new electronics. This uh, big filter cap looks fine though. So yeah, this is our junky power supply. Um, everything else looks okay except for the caps. So this is, I believe three amps. Um, 48 watts, 12 volts output DC. So I went ahead and um, I got this uh, meanwhile power supply off Amazon here. Um, this is 50 watts, 4.2 amps. So it's the it's bas it's the same. It's basically the same rating. As long if the if it's a little higher, then that's fine. Um, because it's actually it's not actually pushing more current. It's just, it can, it can, you know, support that much. Um, see, I tried, I tried getting a little bit of information off of this uh, model number here. But I kind of couldn't, um, I couldn't really find much online about this. There is a different variant I saw that was like a wine cooler, but no, this only does one fan in the Pelzer, or Pel, I don't even know how you say this. Um, I also have a lot better of an understanding how this works. Well, I mean, I don't know how it works, but I know the basic parts. So I took the fan out here because I'm actually going to replace it with a, a Noctua fan. This one, just because it could also be the fan that's bad. And I don't want to take risks. It's pretty simple. So let me get my power supply here. So basically, this is your output. Or, sorry, my bad. So this is your input. So this is just live 120 volt wire. And then it goes to the input here. And then that output goes here, which then goes to this board, which has the low RPM fan mode and the toggle, the toggle switch and the LED on it, which then feeds power to, you can actually see it on the side, the fan connector and the little Pelsier module. I don't, I, like I said, I still kind of really don't know how this works, but I'm going to go order these up, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you when they finally arrive. Alright, so it is now the next day here, and I'm going to start stripping me some wires. We're going to first start with this fan. So, I need this little 2-pin connector, because I currently don't have a fan with a 2-pin connector. So, I'm just going to give it a little snip. And now I have the 2-pin connector. I'm going to strip these wires. Yes, I will be soldering a 4-pin to 2-pin, quote, adapter. So that's what I got. I want to strip that just a little more, so I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Ah, there. As you can see, that one actually stripped a lot better. So now we've got our little adapter thing here. We've got our thing stripped. Now is actually a good time to see if this fan is good. We're going to test if our fan works just by hooking up positive and negative. Ooh. I hear hissing from the fan. It might be the battery. Alright, so I've went ahead and gotten some uh, 9 volts here. Ooh. That one's definitely not going to work. Look at that. So, I'm pretty sure these three work. Yep. It, that spins pretty slowly, but it does 
spin and not even I can hear that. That sounds fine. Yeah, the bearings on the fan sound good. At this point I'm just testing 9 volts. So now I know that all three of these 9 volts and this fan are good. Now let's get a bit more uh, wire splitting done. As you can see, there's a fridge over there. It still has not moved off of my desk. Alright, so now we're going to do some wire splitting and splicing with our casing here. So, um, as you can see here, this is your AC input. You do not want to touch this when the fridge is plugged in. So anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, this is... This... I need bare wire for this, basically. Same with the output. Because it's kind of like a screw terminal, like you'd see on an old uh, speaker. So we're going to use our wire strippers here. Bad angle again, I guess. But, just going to hopefully cut these. Nice. Nice. And I will also strip, or just cut, this DC one here. And no, I will not be doing any soldering just yet. I'm going to actually insulate this AC right here. I'm not going to do that with the DC because, yeah, sure, whilst it is DC 12 volts, that's still a good amount. It's not going to kill you. It's just going to be like a little, ow. I mean, to be fair, AC 120 isn't going to kill you either, but it's going to hurt a lot more, that's for sure. So now we have both of our AC lines stripped. Before I move on, I'm going to put a little electrical tape on these exposed wires right here. That one right there, you can see there's no exposed little metal bit, so unlike how it was originally. So now I'm going to strip the DC wires, and then I'll finally cut to when um, the, I guess when the fan arrives, because that's supposed to arrive on Friday, and it's currently Wednesday, and I got back from Chicago on Monday. So, that's pretty good for today, guys. I'll catch up to you once the fan arrives. Okay, guys, so yet again, I keep forgetting where my tripod is. So, the fan has arrived. This is what I ordered, this nice Noctua 92mm fan here. And, uh, yeah, we're going to unbox it and see if it fits. This is where the fan would go here. And, let's see if she fits. Yep, that fits. Look at that. It fits really well. <laughs> that actually looks really cool. Nice. I like it a lot. Um, you know what? I might actually try putting the little vibration things on from the front. Hopefully, maybe. Uh, but let, let's see if we can actually get the fan with the vibration things. Because I, I think they look cool and also they'll probably make it a little quieter. We have our things on. Noctua logo goes like that. I decided to put the vibration things on the screw holes to hopefully dampen the noise a bit, but I don't know how effective this will be. You, yeah, you can tell I modded that. Nice. And later today I'll probably film me um, soldering a uh, the adapter. Hey guys, a small update on the fridge here. I am, uh, power supply is still not here, but I am printing a bracket for the um, 3D printer, or, or sorry, for the power supply. I totally forgot that I owned a uh, 3D printer. I got this like two years ago, but I haven't used it in a while. Um, so yeah, I'll update you. Um, I hope it's going to turn out good. Alrighty guys, so I feel like an absolute idiot for not recording the first part of this. I went ahead and taken the uh, heatsink, the Peltzer module, out here. And yeah, there. Th this had horrible thermal uh, thermal paste on it. Um, it really wasn't that special. I took out the two very rusty, for some reason, screws. Yeah, I don't know why they look like that, as well as these... And, uh, God, I keep forgetting my tripod. I guess I'll just have this weird angle like so, because I'm only really using one hand. And, yeah. So, I'm going to repaste it with this Bits Power TP1 thermal compound. I used this in a, a few computers. 
I used this on a computer I recapped. I was gonna use it on that uh on that Optiplex over there, but I, I forgot. <laughs> and I used it on my friend's computer. Uh so oh no. So yeah, this is came in handy pretty well. And I think I'm gonna use it to repaste the fridge. Just because the original temps of the fridge really weren't that low. And uh yeah, so um I'll get this cleaned up and I'll try to film um, me repasting it, but yeah. I, like I said, just a paper towel with some isopropyl alcohol. Alright, so I just applied just an X-shaped thermal compound. Like I said, really standard bits power TP1. I'm not going to spread it around. Um, actually, you know, I, I might do that. And like, it did come with a thermal paste smudger for some reason. But that would leave like air bubbles and stuff, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna try to put it back on. Alrighty guys, so something happened. It arrived. And I give it a little test fit and it does fit in here. So yeah, this is our power supply. I'm gonna try to print a bracket for it, how however, I don't really wouldn't I still don't really know how to mount it. But first, we need to understand how a Peltier mini fridge works. Now, you can skip to the time I put up on the screen to skip this if you already know, but I'd say this is pretty important. So, I drew this really bad diagram in uh, Microsoft Paint. I'm not an artist, but this is basically how it works. So, as you can see, this is the metal where my cursor is. This is the metal that gets cold that you put your drinks in. Or whatever you put in your fridge, I don't know. There's insulation so that the outside of the fridge isn't cold, and also so that um, you know the um, fuck a cons the coldness gets concealed. So this darker gray stuff, uh, there's so many shades of gray in this really bad drawing. This dark gray right here is thermal paste. So I actually replaced the thermal paste. This is something called a Peltier module. This basically works with like semiconductors and stuff that draws heat from the inside of the fridge and puts it on the heat sink. But wait, there, we need some way to dis, to just, you know, diverse, uh, disperse that heat. So that's why we have a fan blowing on it. This is basically the only moving part and the fan is one of the higher failure rates, but typically they don't fail if unless your fridge manufacturer used a bad fan or like you like don't dust your mini fridge. So that blows out all the heat and causing the inside to be cold. Now this is our issue right here, the power supply. These things are notorious for failing and actually that's why Peltzer mini fridges aren't as popular. Cause yes, whilst they're a lot better for the environment, they really fail just a lot more. So yeah, that's my diagram on how it works. Back to the video. So this is the final phase. Now you might be uh, wondering why I'm voicing this over. It's just because the audio was a little weird. As you can see, the fan is starting to spin though. So yeah, this lets me know that um, my fridge is totally functional and actually works. So this is a pretty successful uh, repair. So I'm going to attempt to print a bracket. This is future Ryan speaking, by the way. And, uh, yeah. I am just beginning to print the uh, other bracket. It's going to be a rail mount. So, yeah, let's hope this works. I level. I took a lot of effort to level the bed. But I kind of pulled a little whoopsie here, and... Uh, burnt a small hole in my bed with the nozzle so <laughs> little whoopsie nozzle's still fine though so uh, yeah alrighty guys so unfortunately none of the brackets I used actually fit so I got some large command strips and that seemed to be holding in the power supply really well I'm gonna leave it overnight I'm gonna let it adhere and uh, yeah I'm gonna then wire it back up I'm gonna give it one test as it's assembled and we're gonna give it our 24-hour stability test. Okay guys, so I reassembled the fridge here. As you can see, light is solid green, fan's spinning, and if we have a little look inside, I haven't put anything in it yet, 
but I got my infrared thing here. 43, wow, it's already went down 10 degrees. I'll switch it to Celsius. Look at that, six Celsius. Oh, I wonder if we're gonna get freezing temperatures. <laughs> All right, so the temperature is going up because, look at that, look at that. That's freezing temperature. Let's see, this, that's really cold still, wow. This has been plugged in for like maybe, yeah, like 20 or so minutes, maybe 15. And this thing's freaking chilly. I might get like a drink or something, I might put it in there. All right, guys, so my fridge is finally back to its rightful spot here. Uh, I gave it a little wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol, but my camera is still picking up some fingerprints on it. That's what happens with glossy plastic, right? So, as you can see, I do have some, I have six cans in here. There's two more in the back. Now, um, uh, this is, I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna use this, like, on the road and stuff. Just because that power supply is being held in with command strips, however, I did try to take it take it off because I mounted it wrong, and oh my god, I was scared I was going to rip apart the fridge. Like, I had to use a lot of my strength to get that off. So, yeah. There it is. My um, fridge is finally repaired, which is nice. Um, it's a lot colder than it was thanks to my um, thermal paste upgrade. Um, uh, it's not really that much quieter uh it sounds about the same it sounds a little different but i know that noctua fan's gonna spin for decades and hopefully that power supply is also gonna be good so uh yeah all right so this is the conclusion to this extremely messy video um this video has been weeks in the making Waiting for parts to arrive, trying to get my 3D printer to work. You might notice that this looks a little different than where I last shot. Um, I tripped, like, like right here. And I, I landed on my wrist, so my wrist is, like, really messed up. But I knocked over all my drinks. And I'm like, huh, I think it'd be kind of cool if I were to rearrange this. So, yeah, this is what it looks like now. Now we got my all my stuff up here. So, oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, uh, I was gonna make a video on this sign, but I, uh, I totally forgot about it. So, you know, that's nice. But, uh, I've let this sit for around 12 or so hours, and these cans are so cold. I'd say this upgrade was pretty much worth it. Uh, no, uh, by the way, do not use isopropyl alcohol to clean glossy plastic. That'll just make the smudges worse. This is just with some water and a paper towel. So, uh, hey, look, you can see me in there. Um, so, yeah, that's the conclusion to this video. Now, what do I recommend you buy this fridge? I, I, I really want to recommend buying this fridge, but unfortunately, I can't quite do that. There, is so ma there are so many issues with this fridge. Let me get a bit better of an angle at it here. Yeah, there's a lot of issues with this fridge. Um, basically... So I, I ordered this because I thought it was kind of cool. I didn't really read the reviews. And I'm like, $30, returns accepted, whatever. When it got here, I read the reviews. I'm like, oh, a lot of people are saying this only lasts like two to three months. So then my sister bought one. They sent her the wrong model, and hers died in only a week, which is nuts. So luckily, she got a return. They sent her the correct model, and it's still running. But then mine died. Because I unplugged it. That's what happens. The capacitors are so bad they can't handle like a sudden charge. Even though that's kind of what capacitors are supposed to do. So, uh, yeah. Then mine died. But I know how to repair it now. So thanks for joining me. And if my sister's fridge dies, then I'll make a tutorial on how you can fix your very own fridge. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Bye.